Today's episode of Rejected Media is a little different and interesting because it's about a game that sort of came out, but also didn't. And that is Assassin's Creed Lost Legacy. Now, this is a title that some may remember that really flew under the radar actually all the way back in 2010. It was first announced during Nintendo's E3 2010 press conference, and it actually would have been another Ezio Auditore game on the Nintendo 3DS. This is something interesting I want to talk about today because there's not a ton of information about this game, but there are some things that we can glean from the events happening around this time and also quotes from Ubisoft employees later on. So before we hop into it, please be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more content. If you enjoy this, I have a growing, somewhat hefty playlist of rejected media videos on the channel, which I will place in the end screen of this video for you to easily access. So there's a lot of fun to be found there. It's always a topic that's been interesting to me is what would have happened if this came out and what happened to this. And the lost legacy of Assassin's Creed Lost Legacy is no different because this game would have actually followed Ezio Auditore as he made his way to follow in the shoes of Altair. The original reveal summary of Assassin's Creed Lost Legacy is as follows. Driven by curiosity and a desire to understand the origins of his order, Ezio Auditore travels east in search of the lost castle at Masayef, the ancient seat of the Assassins. Now this might actually sound familiar and maybe ring a few bells with fans of the Assassin's Creed franchise, especially the earlier years, the Ezio Auditore years and the Altair years, because this sounds strikingly similar to a game that we got, which was Assassin's Creed Revelations. And that is actually very much by design, because this game, Assassin's Creed Lost Legacy, would actually go on to be quietly canceled during 2010. It was morphed very, very slowly into different ideas because they were working on Lost Legacy and decided that it wasn't going to work for the 3DS. They wanted to make another mainline Ezio game for the consoles. So on July 14th, 2011, the lead writer of Assassin's Creed Revelations, Darby McDevitt, spoke to Joystick about the game, where it was revealed that the game was canceled completely and simply ported over the concepts into Revelations, saying, you may have heard of the game Lost Legacy for the 3DS. It was announced, but that kind of morphed into this idea when referring to Assassin's Creed Revelations. When we start looking at other information around this game, it's very interesting because the Lost Media Wiki classifies this game's status as officially lost. There is actually no official information or assets or pictures or gameplay or anything that was ever revealed to the public except for one thing which was the game's official logo upon its reveal. Now, the name Lost Legacy might also sound familiar to you if you've played through Assassin's Creed Revelations quite a bit, because there actually is a mission that adopted this name as well, just titled Lost Legacy. And you may know that the game Assassin's Creed Revelations is very much about this same idea. It's Ezio following in the footsteps of Altair, learning the past, learning what happened with him, what happened with the Apple of Eden, that he held on to, and what came before the Ezio era of the Assassins. Obviously, he had information up to a point, with relatives like Mario filling in the gaps over the course of the years uh, prior to his sad passing, but he didn't have all the answers, and so he did travel to Masayev. He did travel to Constantinople and learn more about those events. The game was actually quietly canceled in September of 2010, but it wasn't confirmed to the public until that interview in July of 2011. But like I said before, there's no screenshots, nothing that ever released based on this game, and it actually technically did sort of come out in the form of revelations. There were a few more things said about it as well during the development and hype of Assassin's Creed Revelations because McDevitt actually went on to explain more about what happened with this, clarifying the story that was announced about Lost Legacy was that Ezio goes to Masayef and investigates the Holy Land. Inferring, and then he went on to laugh, inferring that the story for Lost Legacy was more or less directly parallel with Assassin's Creed Revelations. Ubisoft actually also officially confirmed that the game was canceled with IGN. CFO Alain Martinez had explained the cancellation was a decision we made 
back in September of 2010. It wasn't due to anything that took place, we felt the Nintendo 3DS already had a number of hardcore games for its release. Then after this, McDevitt also spoke more about the release schedules of the Assassin's Creed games at the time, saying we do a lot of thinking ahead of time on big arcs, like knowing where Ezio is going, knowing where Desmond is going, knowing where Altair is going. The major beats of all our characters' stories are planned well in advance, so we don't get lost-itis where we're opening up more than we could possibly close off. There were actually many different assumptions on why this happened, and the biggest was that the 3DS sold fairly poorly compared to its predecessor of the DS. You know, the DS, the DSi, all of the original family of DS handhelds that worked together to sell under just the umbrella term of the DS, including the Lite and others, those sold very, very well, but when it came to the 3DS, there was a lot of uncertainty in the market. Now, first off, 3D has always been somewhat seen as a gimmick in the entertainment industry, whether it's movies, games, or whatever. I mean, heck, we have going all the way back where there were a lot of games released in the PS2 and even Xbox 360 PS3 generation that actually included 3D glasses for you to wear, such as Sly 3, Honor Among Thieves, and even, of course, Batman Arkham Asylum. These were sort of seen as just a fun little gimmick, fun little thing. Some people bought 3D televisions, people went to see 3D movies that still exist even now in 2022, leading into 2023, but again, always sort of just an entertainment gimmick, something fun that actually causes a lot of headaches for a lot of people, so it was never widely adopted, and also requires the use usually of some kind of peripheral technology to make it work. Because of that, there was a lot of different uncertainties around the 3DS and what it was. This was also during a time period where Nintendo itself decided that they didn't really need to market their things because they were Nintendo and they would sell no matter what, which directly led, in my opinion, to a lot of the problems around the Wii U and the 3DS. Many consumers just believed that they were a slight upgrade of an already existing console with maybe a gimmick they didn't need, or just something like that. So for example, with the Wii and the Wii U, it was actually a misperception for years for the wider audience that had bought the Wii that the Wii U was essentially just a expensive, updated version of the Wii, just an expensive attachment or peripheral for it. Because Nintendo had courted this general audience so much with the DS and with the Wii that they didn't feel they needed to market to them, so then the 3DS and Wii U sold pretty poorly, despite the fact that I like them both very, very much. For example, 11 years ago, Destructoid was actually talking about the sales of the 3DS, and I can't believe I'm this old, but they went on to mention in an article that during June of that year, 143,000 3DS units were sold, but the Nintendo DS family of consoles in general, during that same month, still was able to sell 386 thousand units. People were interested in buying the DS and they weren't interested in the 3DS at this time. They were interested in the older tech that was cheaper, had a much wider variety of games on it at the time, and of course was more accessible and marketed to the general public, so that's what they bought. This was what Nintendo had been pushing and marketing for years. They hadn't pushed the 3DS very much, and of course, as we all know, the rest is history because the 3DS would never reach the sales heights of the DS, despite being physically capable of a lot more in terms of the technology and the games that could be put on it, and having some fantastic standout games, including some of the Pokemon titles like Omega Ruby, Alpha Sapphire, X, and Y. Now, what happened in terms of Lost Legacy? What actually happened to this game? Well, it did eventually come out, just not the way you would have expected. Because as Darby McDevitt pointed out, this game became Assassin's Creed Revelations. Essentially with all of its pitches and everything that they were going for, that all ended up in a AAA console game that's still actually receiving updates, I will say, in a way, even into modern year as it's been ported up to console generation after console generation, being made available on the Ezio collection on the Xbox One and PlayStation 4, and of course then eventually being enhanced for the Xbox Series X. 
Now, this is something I really enjoy about the game is that it is still very accessible. I'm actually surprisingly glad that this happened. I can't say I've been glad about a cancellation very often, but because of what happened, we got a fantastic game, which I always have argued is probably the best, or at least, at the very least, my favorite game in the Assassin's Creed Ezio trilogy, which sort of takes place over a very late period in Ezio's life, where he does go, he does find these answers. You find out more about the history of Altair, there's more revealed about the Isu and the modern day storyline, and there's a lot of different things going on in this game that I find very fascinating. And while there has never been official screenshots or this or that actually released about the original version of Lost Legacy, and they did claim that it didn't really have anything to do with the sales of the 3DS, I sort of believe that there wasn't much of anything around for this game. It seemed to be very much in the conceptual phases as it was so easy to morph into Revelations and just take all of the ideas from that and put them into Revelations. The game wasn't even around for a year after its announcement because it was announced actually in 2010 and was canceled in 2010, meaning it likely was not very far into development at all. But any data that did possibly exist on this game, like internal memos, maybe some alpha build in very, very early alpha or anything like that, is very likely deleted or on someone's personal hard drive somewhere that used to work at or still works at Ubisoft and likely never going to come out, or at least not for quite a few years. We still see canceled Nintendo 64 games and things like that occasionally leak to the public, even in modern day, so the chance is always there that there will be something to be found of Assassin's Creed Lost Legacy, and while I don't want to say definitively that this game would have been bad, I do believe that the handheld games for Assassin's Creed in that DS era prior to the 3DS were not nearly as good or interesting as the Assassin's Creed games were on the console during that time. It wasn't really like Assassin's Creed Liberation for the Vita, where it could eventually be fixed up and re-released on console and just felt like a smaller console game. The 3DS, despite what it was capable of, was not an incredibly powerful machine, and I do believe that the technical abilities and the technology that was around at the time would have really limited the scope and the concepts available in this game compared to what we got in Assassin's Creed Revelations. So for once, I'm actually happy to say that I'm glad that we got this game in the form of Revelations instead of getting it as it was and it now being just locked on the 3DS and never really coming up anywhere since those games just really stayed on that generation most of them never really came to Switch, most of them never really went anywhere, they just lived and died with the life of the 3DS. And I'm glad to say that Lost Legacy's legacy wasn't truly lost, as it lived on in the remains of Assassin's Creed Revelations, a game which people love. Now let me know what you think in the comments down below, I was very interested to find out more about this game. I would love if someday maybe there was like a pre-alpha build that got leaked online, or something like that, or more details were revealed and shared with people. I unfortunately am not on great terms with a lot of game development companies, including <laughs> Ubisoft, because usually when I get these people's attention it's not for a good reason, because I'm not happy with something that they did so obviously for me it's sometimes harder to actually reach out and get more information on this stuff especially when so much time has passed so many years and so few of the people who still work on it are with the companies or remember it or have information about it but if you know more about lost legacy please be sure to you know share it with me in the comments down below i'm very interested and please leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video i hope you all have a fantastic day before i go my wife jill has been working a ton on her resin store now this is actually a store where she sells all kinds of stuff she sells jewelry and resin pieces and just all kinds of really cool stuff and lately she's been working on comic book pieces because we've been able to gather up comic books that were being thrown out by retailers in our home state of Minnesota and actually rework and reuse the paper to be featured in artistic pieces that Jill has made, including coasters, keychains, and more. These are all over on her website, enchantedglamour.com. 
That's Enchanted, G-L-A-M-O-R.com. The link to that will be in the description down below. She makes very high quality, awesome pieces, and every purchase goes to help the channel, her channel as well, and everything that we do. So we appreciate you very, very much. I wanna say a huge thank you to my patrons for making videos like this possible, especially in this uncertain time of YouTube where it's very hard to get views, very hard to grow and actually get people to see my stuff. So a big thank you here, Jason, Regular, Mark, Vince, Nicholas, Sean, Colin, Jervaris, and Jonah. So thank you all very, very much for supporting the channel. I appreciate you all very, very much. It does mean the world to me and it does really help us to make more videos and keep things going because it is very hard to grow right now. And we've had a very hard time with YouTube actually not showing people the videos we put up. So it means a lot to us. Thank you very much. Have a fantastic day. And as always, everyone, stay shway.